Disney for Life, and we are back with Fallout 4 Challenge Build. We are at 10 Plans Bluff, and this, and I think that I said that like really, really weird, like my tongue got tripped over itself. But anyway, we are at 10 Pines Bluff, and this is the final build. And this is the finished product. I am actually going to go into first person for this particular one to show you all of the wonderful details. All right, and here is just the entranceway, all finely textured up and everything, along with a wonderful suitable sign for an official settlement, uh, along with a inconspicuously placed rock to hold it up. It just looked weird standing there. I had to do it. All right, and we finally have the reinforced front. So this is probably not the best time of day, but it seemed to be the time of day that the FPS seemed to act right, so I chose this one. All right, and finally textured up. We do have our little thing here, and ah, there it goes. Ah! All fresh, all clean. Okay. And then we've got this inside. Now, this inside could actually be used as a security area, though not technically officially a security area as we can't climb ladders. But they are there. Maybe if I turn this on, it'll help you be able to see it a little bit better. And there's some ammo and a secure. Are you ever going to turn off? I'm going to get all misty. Come on! And here is a little Brahmin feeder. It's just never going to shut off, is it? Do I have to push the button again? Come on, stop. I'm trying to talk. Thank you. Thank you. Good heavens. Oh, I just realized that that was floating a little bit. Uh, let me fix that. Come on! Oh, I'm not even in the build zone. Hang on. Come on! Thank you! Okay. I'm gonna put this over... Over... Uh... I probably should just shrink it a little bit, maybe. Just the teensiest bit. There we go, now it fits. Okay. Now it fits. There's the Brahmin feeder. Okay, and here is our front security area, along with its own little combat shotgun. Great for keeping an eye on those that are coming in. And a little bit of cover, just in case the sun gets to be too much. And this wonderful convoluted entranceway. I'm not sure why I decided to do it this way. It just seemed to work. And then we've got the caravan area. Uh, for those of you who missed my caravan builds, you should go back and check those out. I actually built a caravan area everywhere I could think of that had one of these already placed fire areas. Alright, and here is a sitting area where they can sip on coffee or hot cocoa or whatever that is. And uh, discuss where they're heading next. And... Then just like a couple of cots for them to sleep on. Uh, that one's the Unstoppables, I think. And we got a bookshelf over here with some books, some first aid kits. Just a bunch of random things stuck to the wall. And I found some wonderful little posters that have like, not necessarily spoofs, but these alternate reality sci-fi posters that I absolutely love. And apparently this one likes to snack. And it's got the Groganoff sleeping bag. And this is where they would drop off all the... Okay. This is where they drop off all the mail because during my previous caravan series, I determined that the caravanners are also responsible in some way for the delivery of mail. So there's the, the newspapers, some bottles that maybe they're taking around to be collected somewhere. Maybe someone who has actually established a recycling plant for all of these wonderful little bottles that people keep finding on their... Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On their wonderful excursions, because I know I pick up at least 5,000 bottles and 10,000 cans. So somebody else has got to be doing it too, right? And here is the finished store area. This area hasn't actually changed very much. It's very densely packed with a whole bunch of things. We've got the bookstore over here where you can actually check out a book. Probably for people local. And we've got a little area to type up and, you know, keep track of everybody who's borrowed a book. And we've got our chemist. Wonderful little doodads and for experimenting with whatever people bring them. 
and they sell a little bit of produce, but not necessarily produce. This is the alcohol slash liquor store, I guess you could say. And this is the junk dealer, so anything you can think of that's junk, this is the person we need to talk to. Along with uh, Amila in a, uh, a crib. And I actually got this idea from Phoenix. I saw it in one of her builds for the, um, she was doing a grocery store somewhere. And I watched how she put the grocery store together and I absolutely love the idea of using the, the crib as a storage area. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. So it was awesome. So thank you, Phoenix. And I will leave a link to her, de her videos. Calm down, calm down, down in the description. And here is, man, these generators are so loud. But here is our other security area. Uh, great view. I'm, I'm sure that there are some bad guys that like to hide right over there in that valley. So good area to have a defensible position. And they've got all their weapons, their ammo, their everything they could possibly need up here for this. And a little bit of retexturing and building up going on as they go. Alright, and we've got the walkway over to the residential portion. And I'm going to try and keep it as slow as possible so all of the details can be seen. And if you are interested in any of the items that you are seeing here, my mod list is down in the description in alphabetical order because it's a whole lot harder trying to put them in the order that they are showing up on my Nexus mod manager because some of them are identified as the file name instead of the actual mod and I wanted to be able to give you the name of the mod. So they are in alphabetical order down in the description if you would like to take a look at one of the mods that I am running. Or if you can't figure out which one it is just leave me a comment down in the comment section and I will try to identify which mod is running it. Um, Alright and our showers Excuse me while I shower. Um, okay, this is getting awkward. Stop! Let me out! Probably shouldn't be showering in the middle of the video. But when you need a shower, you need a shower. Alright, and here is the actual residential uh, kitchen area. Anybody can come in here, make their meals. Uh, make an espresso or make a nuka cola and we do have several cases of things that have been brought in from probably the store area several things of food some veggies from out there and we've got some noodles going and some I think that's iguana bits they're trying to cook right there so maybe iguana bits and mac and cheese that sounds kind of good and there's another security area over here just kind of keeping an eye on things in case anything happens over there that needs to be they need to be aware of though I don't particularly care for the person who sits here because they're kind of a peeping Tom to the shower area so gotta watch out for them and make sure you sh close the shower curtain every single time and here is a nice little sitting area for some food and watching the tube which is technically not even connected right now. Don't you do it, don't you do it, don't you do it! Ah! No! Don't do it! Okay. It was fisting to start storming that red storm that I can't survive right now that is bored later on. If you are interested, see the Psycho Mistress videos. You will understand a little bit more about the craziness that will ensue as those videos come out. But as it stands right now, that will kill me, so I will not allow it to happen. And these are the actual residences. Uh, wonderful little sitting areas, sleeping areas. I love the texturing that is on this dresser right here. I absolutely love that. I mean, I would own that dresser right there just because I like the way it looks. Some of the other colorations, not so much. And I guess you could say this is the computer person working on some bits and bobs and probably tinkering with some of the things that are brought in. And this is a couple with some kids. 
And I did make a remark about this blanket. I actually own one that looks just like this that my grandmother made, but the outline is actually in blue instead of black, so definitely something I would expect to see in a post-apocalyptic scenario, because it seems like I'm not the only one who's got a blanket like that. I've heard a couple of comments about other people who have got blankets that look just like that. So I definitely think they would show up in the apocalypse. A wonderful little area to put all of your, um, umbrellas? I don't think y'all are using this thing right. That is for umbrellas. Why is it getting dark on me? It needs to stop getting dark on me. All right, I will show you all the last little bit of this, and then I will go rest, and I'll show you the rest. So this is the cooking area. There's actually currently not anything... Ew, I don't know what that is. So I was going to say there's not anything going, but apparently there is. Somebody started the food after I came through the first time, but whatever. All right, and here is the vending area for your cigarettes, your ice, a couple of Nuka-Cola, some, even some Vim has made it here. And we've got our full laundry mat, and um, I'm not sure if they do serve us here, so you probably have to wash your own clothes. Okay, now that we have covered all of this particular building, I'm going to run and rest so it will be daylight again. Really? Why does it have to rain? Stop raining. I just absolutely love this thing just because I build. Okay, better. Better, better, better. Okay. Who is sniffing? That was weird. Oh no, the Brahmin are here. Okay, anyway. And these are the showers down here. There's a couple of things that look like they've just been kind of tucked over in the corner and left to rot. And the full-service bathroom, including your very own, uh... <laughs> um, including your very own literature to read while you're sitting on the toilet. A uh, nice, wonderful washing-your-hand kind of station. Yeah. And these showers work as well. That is part of the CCSW mod. Anyway, they give you all kinds of working stations that, uh, for showers and sinks and things like that. And then we've got the area to put your clothes as you're getting dressed. And as I said, make sure you shut your curtain because there's a peeping Tom right there. Uh-huh. I see you. I see you. You don't think I see you, but I see you. Okay, let me take it slower because it's a different time of the day, so the FPS is acting just a little bit different. All right, and no smoking in this area, and it is a restricted area. Yeah, about that farm run by ghouls. And yes. it's going to get very loud in here because this is where all the generators are. This is the big generator, and this is the one that's actually being worked on. Right there. And then we go over here to one of the places where people sleep. And this is mostly for a security team right here. This is their lockers. And they've got a few books and some areas to keep their... Those Brahmin are gonna get on my last herb. Uh, they got some bags and everything for all of their gear. A few trophies up on the wall. Oh, this area is like the worst for sound. Uh, and an area for people to shoot some hoops and relieve some stress. Uh, honestly. I, I really don't want to have to have this discussion with you sitting out here. The Brahmin feeders are on the other side. Alright, and this is a training area where they can learn to take care of themselves out in the wilderness. You can lift some weights, gain a little bit of... What are you doing? Oh, you lay down. That was a lot of noise for that thing to lay down. Anyway, uh, uh, lift some weights and God almighty knows I don't like the Brahmin in town. Okay, uh, there's some extra weights in here for you to gear up, change out the weights. I guess, you know, depending on your build or whatever, you're going to need to change out the weights. Uh, a couple of outfits to change into if need be, or to cover up your work outfit, however that works. And then we have got the uh, boxing gloves, the area for putting those up, which apparently nobody put those up. 
and we've got a thing right here for people to box. Uh, wait, see, there we go. I imagine that probably actually hurts the hands a little bit, which is the reason why for the boxing gloves. Just saying. Probably a good idea to take the hands and, and use the gloves. And this is the security area for the back. It's got a wonderful view of the countryside and lots and lots of weapons to shoot that countryside up. Uh, keys that are probably supposed to be in someone's pocket for the guard shack. And uh, a few trophies, some drinks, people drinking on the job, which they probably would tend to do in the apocalypse. But this one has got one of the better views, views of the actual full settlement. You can really, really see the top of the settlement from this perch is just about the only one that really gives that good view. Okay, let me see if I can quickly make it... Oh my goodness. This is going to be a thing with you, isn't it? You're cute, I'll give you that, but you're still a pain. Okay, and this is the shooting range for everybody to get really good at shooting. You, uh, be quiet... I uh, will turn the volume all the way down if I have to. Okay, uh, you sign in here, you pick out a weapon here. They don't necessarily want you using, you know, rocket launchers inside their shooting range. That probably wouldn't turn out very well. And we've got one lane here, one lane here. This typically is for the trainee, the, I guess you could say the amateur trainee, maybe? And then one here, and the point is, is to come here and load up your weapon and possibly shoot a couple of times. There's a lot of targets down there. And then come up here, and at this point, you would actually have to... Do I have a weapon? In my inventory, I should. Uh, let's just use the 10 millimeter. And... Oh, I don't have my stuff. Okay. I will find it! Oh. gun it! Don't get me. Ugh. <laughs> Stop shooting me. Okay, okay, okay. Oh man. Well, it got really close. I don't think I actually got shot. Right, let me see. Did it get me? No, I still look clean. I still look clean. Okay, I'm good. Anyway, it, it's rigged up to actually make you have to dodge. And there's a whole bunch of things down there to try and shoot and dodge at the same time. And you would come down here and, like, kneel down so you get several different positions to have to try and shoot from. And same over here. Let me see if I can get this one. Uh oh Oh! Ow! I'm pretty sure that one got me. Ah, uh, I don't have my sight on. <laughs> I might actually have that one. Yeah, I think I got that one tilted the wrong way a little bit. Aye, 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 aye. All right. Anyway, could you please stop? Thank you. But the, okay. Now the, I do have this here. Like some kind of incident happened or something. Like maybe they were experimenting on how they were going to get this whole thing set up, and then something got fried. Maybe one of the animals climbed over here and played with it. But there's several different things to shoot over here, from milk bottles to glasses to cardboard cutouts to toys. So whoever is being trained can shoot at whatever it is that they're needing to shoot at. Plus, there's some baskets here for cleanup. A little ventilation area because, you know, the gunpowder and the smell of the, the shooting and everything could actually get a little overpowering. So just to ventilate the air... Plenty of light coming in, so everybody can definitely see their targets. A couple of uh, reminders, like this one right here, on why you should probably be practicing. Oh, it was shooting past there. That one actually got me, I think. Oh, let me see. No, not unless it cleans up really fast. I don't think it got me. <laughs> that one got everywhere. That's funny. I like that. Okay, um, on to the hospital. I got an area out here for people to come out and de-stress while they're waiting for their loved one to get done seeing the doctor. Some cigars, you know, in case, I guess, if someone's having a, a child. And then we've got books to read, areas to just sit and mingle and 
smoke or whatever. And hospital, drug sign, clinic. And in here we've got the waiting room and the receptionist desk with all of the bips and bobs that go along with being a receptionist. And we've got this here in case they ever have to roll out and get somebody who's severely injured. And basically the post-apocalyptic version of a crash cart is about how I can describe that. And then we've got beds here and an eye chart. And this is kind of set up as if a child would be sitting here because they need the most comfort in the apocalypse. But definitely, definitely also here for the adults. Though adults tend not to see the doctor as often as they probably should. An area to, for to wash up and, well, for the doctors, nurses, whoever to wash up. A wheelchair in case anybody needs to be picked up. Some reading things in case anybody here waiting to see the doctor uh, needs to read something. Anyway, a uh, doctor's office. A little bit of cliche colors here. Kind of intentional because I always picture a doctor having like charts and weird paintings on the wall on the cliche carpets along with the tons of paperwork and cassettes and everything where they've got recorded their notes and a, a skeleton so they can you know demonstrate to a, a impossible patient this is what's going on it's right here and the x-rays and like there's always like that one that's got the weird thing in the jar I saw that I was like that needs to go in here and of course the filing cabinet so that is the doctor's office, and that goes right back out to the entrance, but we are going to go this way. And here we actually have some of the garden. Now I can show you the stats. Come on, pull up. It takes forever. Okay, right now food is at 15, water is at 23, and we have more than enough beds for everybody, but there are only five people here. So plenty of everything for this town to grow, but as my charisma is very low, I can't bring very many people here. But as I said, the food would be hidden, and it's not necessarily hidden for people who know what the food looks like, like the you know what I call fruit a good plant. Day. One that ends without an empty stomach. Well, keep picking through that bench at that plant, and that will work, I'm sure. Okay, and they got a nice relaxation area, but the food is kind of hidden and out of the way. There's not like an official growing area, so if raiders were to come into this, they probably wouldn't know what they were looking for. And this is where they actually store things that have been traded in, or things that are growing here. Or things that are made here, actually. And we've got this all textured up. And that is the entranceway to... The full restaurant. This is probably where people from the outside would actually stop by and eat, rather than the people who actually live here. And as I said, there are bits of food that are being hidden in plain sight. See, like we have a, well, that carrot just kind of overgrew itself, but it's supposed to be tucked in there like that one. <laughs> anyway, that didn't quite work out right. Uh, we've got the grocery, we got the bakery, we've got a full-on bar, which actually sounds very, very good right now. A huge salad bar. Sounds epic right now. It is so hot, I would love a huge salad. And we've got your dark tea, I mean not your dark tea, but your dark coffee and your light coffee for those who prefer to have some cream in it. We do have some Brahmin that like to stop by and get in the way, so we put them to use. And right back here, we actually have the full-on kitchen, some sharp objects that probably should not be played with, and some food going. Actually, it looks like it's kind of cooling, maybe. And full-on kitchen with the, all the amenities and a drippy sink. Good heavens. Someone is going to need to fix that. That is a waste of water. And here is not necessarily a place where people would sit. This is more of a, a decor area. But if you were possibly getting a meal that you were going to be taking out, like a to-go order, then you would sit there and wait for your food. And then we have the actual waiting room for the restaurant area sitting. And we've got a wonderful little um, fishy thing, which they don't move. So not really entertaining to watch them. Not really sure why that's a thing, but all right. And here is the full-on dining area. Very colorful, a nice little centerpiece for 
you know, kind of a conversation thing. Not necessarily that everybody would sit there, but of course somebody is going to sit there because somebody has to sit there at the weird table, which would be absolutely awesome. And this time, rather than actually shrinking these plants down like I used to, somebody actually created a mod with them shrunk down with different colored containers. So I no longer have to shrink my own plants. It actually saves just a little bit of time and adds a little bit more color. And is this the one? Yeah, that's the one that's actually got the, the Mirelurk Hunter in it. That's pretty cool. And nice vase on top. This is kind of, I, I would dare to say this is kind of upscale for a restaurant of the wasteland. Definitely one people talk about coming to during their travels. And there are more food areas just littered around. There are a couple of tattoos that are just sitting here that are very obvious, but the rest of the stuff is kind of hidden unless you know what you're looking for. And here's a lovely little irrigation, adding some wonderful atmosphere to our restaurant, kind of a lakeside without the lake, I guess. And then we actually have a forester. They go out and they harvest herbs out in the forest and they come back here and cultivate them for the uh, settlement. So anything you could possibly think of, you could probably find it here first. And then over here, a couple of things tucked away in the corner, some boxes and some luggage and things like that, possibly from one of the travelers that are coming through and possibly also from a resident that just recently settled down here. And this one is more of a gardener slash scavenger area. So we've got all the chemicals you'd probably use, all these little shovels and the fertilizer, the watering thing. And I could have swore I saw that bear's head move. That was just creepy. Anyway, all of that here. This is basically the gardener shed, but it looks pretty bare. And since our garden is supposed to not really show very much, it does seem to kind of fit. We do also have this little doggy area tucked over in the corner, and I don't know if I pointed it out, but there's a doggy food area thing up there near security to encourage the pups to come over there and say hi to those who are doing security. And here is our water treatment area, some tools and bobs and whatever to keep up with that, a scavenging station, and just a little area to kind of sit over here and be quiet so they can't tell you're not working. I see how it's going to be. I see what you guys are doing. Not working. That's what you're doing. You're just hiding over there in the corner. And we have another security area with a couple of little hooks that don't seem to be occupied right now. I'm not sure what that's all about. What are y'all using that for anyway? I think you need to point that in another direction. I thought so. Thank you. Alright, and they've got a couple extra weapons, some ammo. And this is not necessarily just a guard area. I'm sure there's some residents to come up here and they could sit down and take a gander. Because that right there, my friends, is a wonderful view of the clouds going over the mountains. Some distant hills and everything. You know, dreaming of what could be if you weren't digging at the ground and picking at plants. Okay, yes, yes I do. Day. You have no idea. And then, down here, of course, that's the water area. And, of course, more food tucked off in the corners. Uh, dude, I don't know what you you're doing back some. here. But you need to go find a place. And here is another security area. It's kind of tucked up over here in the corner. So you can just kind of keep an eye out without actually being overtly, this is a security area. Please step away from the entrance. So this is kind of a, an undisclosed security area, just in case they have anybody coming in the back way. Or, as you just saw, leaving out the back way without his Brahmin, which is currently in my way. Dude, take your Brahmin. <sighs> okay, now was there anything I did not show? I think that pretty much covered everything. But that is, yeah, I think that's, that, that's pretty much it. And that is the Ten Pines Bluff Build Challenge. So, if you have an idea for a challenge, just let me know. Hit me up in the comment section. I would be 
more than thrilled to hear your comments and your uh, questions or your challenges. I'm really looking forward to doing more of these and I will see y'all in the next video. Y'all have a wonderful day, a wonderful night, and a wonderful five o'clock somewhere. Bye-bye.